Mike, come here. Come on. Get your frisbee. Where's your frisbee? I need a frisbee. There we go. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good catch, bud. And a boy. All right. Getting down to the wire here. I'm going to be leaving in uh, a few days. And I was originally planning on going the first half of next week. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, but I've been watching the weather forecast and just my luck, those four days happen to be the hottest four days that area has had in months. So um, I think I'm going to push my trip back to the second half of next week. That way I will skip Tuesday, which is forecasted as, quote, very hot. And look at that, it's even got a little swirl in there. Isn't that cute? Uh, shooting large format and stuff out in the really hot desert heat is no bueno. Um, worse than that, though, is high wind. So I would take almost anything over high wind. Really hope it's not windy those, those days. It's not forecasting wind right now, but we'll see as we get closer to it. Now I'm going to Arizona, specifically the southwest part of Arizona. And uh, my goal on this trip, the reason I'm going here is I really want to photograph some organ pipe cactus. A uh, viewer of my YouTube channel very generously gifted me a bunch of Polapan 51HC. I'd never heard of this film before but it's super unique. It's like Type 55 in that it's a monochrome peel apart film, but what's weird about it is the negative is normal. It's like Type 55, but the print is ultra high contrast. That's what HC stands for in 51HC. Uh, the print has a dynamic range of like maybe two stops, three stops, I don't know, something like that. It's, it looks almost like a sketch. So what I'm imagining here is I wanna find some beautiful cactus out in Arizona. And I would love to photograph them just after the sun has set, where you get that really bright sky. And all I will end up with is almost like a charcoal drawing of a cactus against a white background. And I think that's just gonna look so damn cool, at least the way I'm envisioning it. So hopefully I can make it work. I've only shot one exposure 51HC so far, and I can tell already it's a super unforgiving film. I only have nine exposures left, and I'll never be able to buy more, but that's okay. I'll have plenty of time to agonize about that on the long drive out there.
I'll be honest, I was getting discouraged for a little bit there because uh, I didn't feel like I was gonna find a good campsite. But finally settled on this one, and I think this is actually gonna be perfect. Uh, it's pretty close to where I had marked on the map as a potential first campsite, so that's good, I guess. But uh, the main reason this is good is because it's clearly been used before as a campsite. There's a fire ring and other evidence of people camping here previously. And uh, that's good because you're not really supposed to establish new campsites out in this wilderness. You're supposed to use campsites that have previously been used before. Um, so that's good. Uh, I really hope the wind dies down. It's a lot stronger than I hoped it would be. And hopefully it'll be completely gone by tomorrow. It didn't really show any wind in the forecast. I'm not gonna pitch my tent just yet. Uh, I wanna walk around a bit, check out the scenery, check out what kind of cactus we got around here, and then maybe scout out a shot or two for uh, um, a little bit later. I have my Fuji GW692 with me, loaded with Portra 400, just in case I find anything worth shooting right now. But uh, mainly, what I'm trying to do right now is just figure out where to plant my tripod later. Uh, scouting the area, figuring out some compositions, uh, getting a lay of the land, and seeing if there's any worthwhile uh, cactus to shoot later or tomorrow. Um, and it's really cool out here because there's uh, quite a variety of cactus. We have saguaros, of course. Uh, we have Akatillo, which I love. We have Choya cactus, also known as teddy bear cactus or jumping cactus. They call jumping cactus because sometimes they seem to just jump up and bite you. And then there's also some organ pipe cactus. I found some. So I'm going to try and figure out a composition or two for this evening. I would like to shoot uh, at least one frame of 51 HC. So hopefully I can find a specimen that'll work uh, on that particular film. I exposed some frames with the 690, basically just trying to get the creative juices flowing. I needed to get in the right mindset for my first in the wild shot on 51HC. But more so than that, I needed to get out of the mindset I was currently falling into. Which despite my efforts to hide it on video was actually pretty shitty. I'd gotten very little sleep, as is tradition for me the night before a trip. I was burnt out from over 7 hours of driving. I just wasn't feeling motivated to take any pictures. And yet I had put all this pressure on myself to create something good on this trip, in both photos and video. This pressure, coupled with that deep exhaustion, sent me spiraling. One half of me was cracking the whip and taking no excuses, while the other was begging for a break. Neither got what they wanted, so I just ended up two miserable halves of a whole. Which somehow added up to more than the sum of its parts. I was about as discouraged as I'd ever been. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Tomorrow you have nothing but time. That was my wife talking me off the ledge. I just was out there taking pictures with the GW 692 and I just, I don't know. It's just like all the, all the air got let out of my tires like that. Just like, I don't want to take any of these pictures. Nothing is motivating me. Inspiration is a weird thing when it comes to art. Like you kind of, you, you need it if you want to create something worthwhile. And I feel like the longer you pursue an art form, the uh, stronger that inspiration has to be for it to actually work. Like it used to be when I was starting out in photography, I could just plop myself into a beautiful environment like this and just, just go wild. I'd just be taking pictures. Not enough time in the day, there's so many pictures I want to take. But like the longer I've been in photography, the more I've noticed I, I that doesn't work as well anymore. I can't just plop myself somewhere where in theory there's going to be good photos to take. But I don't know, really. I'll make it happen when I get there. It doesn't uh, work as well anymore. Maybe I'm calloused or something. I don't know. Maybe my uh, 
artistic drive is kind of calloused and it takes a lot more to to break through it you know and really want to take a picture i'm going to try and salvage one photo tonight shot a 51 hd maybe and then tomorrow start fresh start with a new game plan i think that's all i can do Kind of running out of light. Can't dawdle here, but good news is the way I want to shoot it, I need the cactus to be in shadow and the background to be lit up, the sky to be lit up. And that should continue for a little while. And of course I left my meter at the car. God damn it. All right, I'm gonna set up the shot and then I'll run back and get it. This doesn't have perfectly vertical lines like a building, but I don't really wanna point the camera up very far if I don't have to. Okay, I don't have enough rise on my lens. So I've tilted my camera backwards and then now I'm just putting the standards back to vertical and that's like giving it a bunch of extra rise. It's like extending the rise limits on the view camera. All right, I gotta go get my stuff. Okay, fresh battery in the video camera. Got my light meter, got my film. Let's really slow down and think this through. Okay, it's ISO 640, so I gotta change that. Okay. Okay, good, this guy's gonna blow out, no problem. This side towards the lens. Here we go. Thank you, wind, for cooperating. Okay. So, before the light's completely gone, I want to go develop this, see how it came out. Because if I want to do a second, second shot because the pack has dried up or something, I want to come back and do that. So I'm going to leave the camera, run back to the car, develop this, see how it goes. You better come with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Seeing these results was a little bit of a pick-me-up, but not enough to snap me out of my abysmal state of mind. The exposure was spot on, and had I known how difficult this film would prove to be for me on the rest of the trip, I would have been doing celebratory cartwheels right about now. But do you see that black bar along the bottom of the frame? That's from the bellows sagging, on account of my strong lens rise. It wasn't lack of coverage from the image circle. That would have clipped the corners at the top of the image, not put a black bar along the bottom. I intended on lifting the bellows to push this intrusion out of the way just before I fired the exposure, but I forgot at the last moment. As I would soon learn, with 51HC, something always has to go wrong. Day one was coming to a close, and as far as I was concerned, all I had to show for it was a bunch of spent fuel and some mediocre pictures. Looking at them now, I love the exposures I made on this first day, but I didn't at the time. Plus, I was pretty sure the video was going to suck too.
Not even 24 hours in, and I was already over it. Though, I wasn't about to hightail it home with my tail between my legs. All I needed was some rest. So, I set out to build my little home away from home, hoping that eating dinner and stretching out in the comfort of my tent would recharge my batteries for tomorrow. But the hard desert floor had other plans for me. After 15 minutes of absolute pounding, I barely sunk two stakes. And I bent a third. This tent uses 12 stakes. And these Kodiak tents literally can't be erected if they're not staked down first. It was a devastating blow. Now, sleeping in the back of my truck isn't the end of the world, but it just ain't the same as having a proper shelter from the elements where I can actually stand up and move around like a civilized human being. And with my truck shimmying in the wind all night, I knew I wouldn't be getting a good night's sleep on the bed platform. The trip was off to a rough start. I spent the next morning distracting myself from all things photography before leaving camp. It was my way of hitting the reset button on my brain. And sure enough, that break was just what I needed to get back in the mood to take photos. The creative fire inside me hadn't fully returned yet, but I could feel it igniting. Loaded up another roll into the Fuji and set out to pour some fuel on that fire. Each shutter click was like adding a log to the pile. The fire just kept growing. That's a wrap for today. Now, I had no intentions of blowing this good mood I was in by subjecting myself to a miserable night in the back of my truck. Come hell or high water, I'd be sleeping on a real mattress that night. One that didn't move in the wind. A lovely lady at the front office of the Copper Sands Motel got me a room and said she saw me in town earlier. But, I don't know, I think it was probably just some other guy wearing a loud shirt and a full brim hat using a 6x17 camera and talking to a camcorder. Be sure to check out part two of this trip here on YouTube. And if you want the extended four-hour version, head over to nickcarverphoto.com slash three nights.